Hey, Katie Girls, it's Sunday, July 18th, 2021, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race All-Stars Season 6, Episode Number 5. It's pink table talk time, honeys. Ooh. So, if you're new to this, hi, welcome to the show. My name's Gary, and with me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome. And we're going to do this little thing where we kind of talk and a little bit of recap about the most recent episode of, of, of RuPaul's Drag Race American mm -hmm. side edition shows, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> just a little bit of tea spilling ourselves. If you're not a patron, you might want to become a patron. Because, <laughs> ooh, was some tea spilled in the pre-show. Yes. We were talking about contemporary news and the Drag Race universe. So, yeah. So you're welcome, patrons. Uh, <laughs> that being said, uh, you ready to jump right in and get into our first? Yes, let's area? do it. Okay. Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. All right. So this week uh, we have pink table talk. So uh, let's put the pedal to the metal and discuss our overall thoughts on the episode. Uh, Damon, <laughs> oh, child. <laughs> First of all, I should probably do this. So just before war, we're going to discuss the episode and kind of spoil some things if you have not seen the episode yet. Uh, so you should probably do that first. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that being the case, uh, so the challenge is this lovely concept where the queens are replicating daytime talk shows. So think of the talk, the view. Yeah. Um, it's a direct this, reference to the red table talk that Jada Pinkett Smith hosts. Thank you. Um, yeah. So basically the queens are, uh, they self-organize into groups of three because there are nine queens. So it's three, three, three. Very convenient. Um, and they are given topics and they have to have discussions in drag uh, for their challenge, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So, David, what did you think of the, of, the, of the episode, so to speak? So, I put down <laughs> RuPaul exposing Queen's personal traumas for fun and profit. Um, so, yes, honey, this is a big old tea spill for this episode. Um, I am always... I feel odd about these kind of things, but I also understand that this is kind of part of reality TV that, you know, most you know people know and love. Like, they're talking about shit that's going on with them in one way, shape, or form. It's whether it's a it's personal history or personal traumas, things that they're, you know, maybe sad about or happy about even, um, given kind of what we talked about. But the three topics in particular were potentially hot button topics um sex body and motherhood so again like three topics that for the lgbt plus community i think are topics that are can potentially be uncomfortable slash traumatic mm. depending on where you're coming from okay um and so, again, like, I always wonder about this shit that happens with this episode, these things where Rue is like, okay, we're going to do this, and you kind of can't get out of it. You know what I mean? You can't, like, excuse yourself from this moment. You can't excuse mm. yourself because it's part of the challenge. And Rue gets to fortunately benefit from that. You know, because it's her show, it's the show, it's a you know, produced show, it's her and World of Wonder and all that stuff. That's why the fun and profit part of part of it kind of thing. Well, I mean, to be fair, your comment is just like the entire like season. It's the I mean, entire yes. like universe of existence. So Yeah, I mean true. But it's it's something that I remember being brought up and being very just like here we go again, here we go talking about stuff again hmm. where um certain you know bad you know like again like certain things are being brought up for the right. sake of entertainment right and how should we feel about it 
Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously we're going to talk about it, but you know, that's kind of what, you know, that's kind of what, it, where I'm getting at with this. It's like, right. Yeah. Rue. Mm, maybe. I don't know. Okay. That's fair. Um, I said it was rather impressive. Personally, I mm -hmm. liked this, like this challenge, this episode, it was different. Um, and I thought it gave the Queens an opportunity to do something that isn't acting, that isn't singing, that isn't lip syncing, that isn't choreo, that, you know, isn't a skit comedy. It isn't mm -hmm. a musical. Like it was different. Yeah. Um, and the last time they did this was a long ass time ago where they were like newscasters. Um, it was like the news thing. Mm -hmm. um, infamously, we got one of the best like moments between Shea Kool Aid and Sasha Velour mm -hmm. and fucking Broccoli. Like, mm -hmm. girl, that shit. And that was more like kind of a morning show thing, I think, if I recall correctly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is a little different, but I think that this can be successful. But I don't disagree with what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I, but I do definitely think that, you know, I was I, personally, I found it to be impressive. So, and I, I will agree in a sense. Like, I did enjoy this moment from the someone who wants the queens to, like, tries to see these queens as more than just, like, entertainers. Because right. they are real people. And this was an opportunity for all of them to to show themselves as real people that we don't often get to see. Right. And so the first group that we had up, um, so what's interesting is they all, it, they're all, it's kind of like we're seeing variations of a theme or different, like, alternate universes. I don't know how else to mm -hmm. reference it. But so they all, it's all the pink table talk. Like, there's no changing of it. It's just three queens each time, and they all had different intros. Like, they all got to make up their own, like, VO, like, explaining a little bit of, like, describing themselves. Who they are, but, yeah. Yeah. So we get Trinity K. Bonet and Eureka and uh, Akira C. Davenport as the first group um, mm -hmm. that are together. So I thought that this went rather well. Agreed. I, I think that they did a really good balanced view. I was concerned that in the preview of the show, mm -hmm. um, Akira revealing that she had tr been previously a person who tr was transitioning, that Eureka was going to take an issue with that. Mm -hmm. Because Eureka has been open about the fact that she did spend a portion of her life going through transition and then decided not to. Mm -hmm. And it's the same. It's not the same, but it's a similar thing that Akira describes. And for some reason, I, I still think Eureka's response was a little interesting in that moment. It was kind <laughs> of like shock, but I still felt there was a moment where I thought she was going to like come for her for some weird reason. And I was yeah. like, oh, child, here comes the drama. But, <laughs> um, but that wasn't really the case. So, yeah, yeah, I. I Go ahead. I, all I'm going to say about this is for the for this setup for the three of them, Eureka is the one I think out of all three groups that looks the most out of place. Fair. I'm like, girl, I just don't understand why you're wearing this outfit for this show. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just not working for me. I, I've been like, <laughs> I've been seeing, I, I usually look at some of those things and I worry, not worry. I wonder again, like where your mind is, is this, are you a drag queen as a, are you dragging up a, talk show host mm. are are you presenting yourself as a talk show host because i think those are two separate things like i'll put it like this like trinity looks very much like a talk show host that i would see on a on a on you know a show like a daytime talk show what have you she's got a very simple right right like blazer and a business kind of businessy suit you know skirt kind of going the short no, not short but god i was gonna say flat but like the simple right not bouffant hair kind of thing akira is in the middle there's obviously some drag elements the big ruffle on the on the sleeve and back mm -hmm. but she did undertone undertone it toned it down words uh, with like this short kind of pixie cut. Eureka 
Um, <laughs> looks like she looks like a grown up pageant, like like child pageant yes. girl. Yes, agreed. <laughs> Fully agreed. Yeah, big ass hair. Almost a baby doll dress, but not quite a baby doll because it's pretty big. Right. Yeah. Ruffles and what have you. So, again, it's just it's very interesting. The choice that you made. But again, you know, as we've learned, they only bring so much drag. Correct. So, yeah, you choose what you choose. No, I agree with you on that. Um, in the second group, we had Miss Raja O'Hara, Kylie mm-hmm. Sonique Love and Scarlet Envy. Mm hmm. Speaking of the way they look, um, I really do feel Raja, child, she is serving the real deal. I was mesmerized watching her in this segment. I was like, did she just roll off another talk show set? Like she <laughs> seriously yes. was giving me woman. Yes. And like, I was just really super impressed with her. I was like, just give her, put her on a show, have her. In fact, did you see, I don't know if you follow her on Twitter, but she even yes, made I a do. comment about how she's like, so I hear there's an opening at the view. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I was like, child. Uh, and I think, you know, um, so Kylie, I mean, she looks all right. But what was interesting is I'm like, why are we serving Ivanka Trump hair? <laughs> like that was the one thing that stood out to me was this big old like swoop like kind of be like not quite beehive you know like blonde yeah it like that's what it evokes for me it just evokes mm-hmm. Ivanka like that's yeah that look but agreed it's very it's I like it I like the color I like the choices I'm I'm not a big fan of the hair but again it's kind of going for that professional business ish type you know look that you would get from a talk show host right Scarlet girl <laughs> I don't know why, but I, I'm totally getting a flashback to the Mariah Carey, like, you know what I mean? Like, religious yes, revival praise, written, yeah, benefit. Praise. Like, yeah. It's the big hair. Like, yeah. she looks like she stepped out of the 80s. Uh, with the big ass. Well, maybe not the 80s. The, the, she'd need more shoulder pad. But, yeah. like, again, let's just big ass bow, this bigger hair. Again, like, this was one of the few times where subtlety would have worked. It's almost like she didn't get the same instructions as everybody else. It's really weird to me. Like, yeah. out of the three of the previous set, Eureka seemed to be the most drag, like the most mm-hmm. extreme. And in this case, it's Scarlet. But Scarlet really looks like she's trying to deliver a drag character. And mm-hmm. we'll get more into that later. But I'm like, everybody else seems to be on the same page. Like, they're just showing mm-hmm. up as themselves you know, as a drag persona, but -hmm. it's kind of like they're doing like a media blitz. Yeah. To me, this feels like these are things that I would have worn in an interview for a pageant. Exactly. Yeah. This isn't like big, like, like you're not like full on, like big ass hair, like the, you know, under that you're just very relaxed in a sense. Cause they, you know, they would want the interviewees would want you to kind of be relaxed a bit more. You know, we don't need to heat, you know, Like, I don't need your big ass hair for this interview. Right. No, I I fully agree. And in the last group, we have Jan, Ginger, and Pandora. So, (laughs) Pandora, I thought looked pretty good. The hair was a little big, but she definitely seemed, you know, fine, comfortable at home. Ginger was the anchor of the three. Like, Mm -hmm. she's the moderator, and she definitely filled that role. And she really is delivering this very interesting, like, um, southern, like, I'm holding the court, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean, kind of look and and whatever. And I I was okay with it, you know? It's giving me, like, southern, like, mother vibes, like, sitting at the table, like, while they're, you know, you know, done up, obviously, Cause who knows who's gonna stop by, but like, right. just you know, ready for whoever. Uh, it also gives me um, a little bit of. Oh, I forget the name of the show. Um, it's a that British show with the woman that always oh making um keeping up appearances. Yes, 
yeah, very much that. Anyway, yeah, moving on. But and then there's Jan. Girl. This is not a Stephanie's Child performance. And I get that purple is your color, but I don't understand why we're wearing a dance outfit. I don't understand this either. This doesn't make sense to me. Again, I'm guessing, I'm assuming that you had so many outfits that you brought. And this was one of them. And you're like, okay, well, it kind of looks like a business suit. But, I mean, heaven forbid they show you from the bottom. But um, they did. Yeah, they did. Several times. <laughs> um, I mean, this picture. Um, right. So, um, I was conflicted on Pandora's look. Um, it was... The dress felt off to me. Mm. Like, it again, it looks like... And it doesn't remind me of Pandora. And the hair was kind of big, too. And that was kind of like, again, I don't necessarily hate the big hair, but I don't love the big hair in these kind of moments. To me, this is an interview. Right. But Pandora has always been kind of a clown as it were and this is what it works right so So, anyway (laughs) so that was that was the three groups um so i did i thought it was rather impressive you know for the most part they all opened up and talked about very real specific you know subjects Mm -hmm. there were some tender moments there was some like learning things and i think the subtext mission that you had kind of referenced earlier, Damon, I think that's really important, is that these queens, these performers, the entertainers, these content creators are real people. Yeah. They're human beings and they face real issues. Yeah. So, like, don't be fucking with them. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of how I felt about that. So, you ready to move on to the next segment? Sure. All right. All right, so uh, next up we have Cruise the Runway. Category is Clash of the Patterns. Mm-hmm. So here's my thing. Uh-oh. I thought Root looked really beautiful. Mm-hmm. But again, I really wish Zaldi would like make outfits that go with the themes of the runways. Like I mm-hmm. would, I would live for for Mama Roo to serve, like the height <laughs> of what this means. Yeah, but I realized that that would make the whole watching, like viewing audience, compare everybody to Roo. <laughs> like true. So like, maybe I'm, it is intentional that she never dresses to theme. But I'm like, I think it's very funny. So I watched Bussy Queen's review. You didn't realize that that's the promo look for her photos. Uh, okay. For the for the photos for All Stars six, not I'm, the like not the one where she's in the black, but like the other ones. Okay. Uh oh, I think it is anyway. I mean, oh. it might be. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, I haven't really thought about it, so. Let me look this up. Oh, where are you at? I'm Where's trying to All-Stars? do a quick look. I mean, the only one I'm really aware of is the black one offhand yeah but well son of a bitch where is all stars but i mean this isn't i mean this is well known that usually the promo or whatever especially ruse look is filmed part of the way through the season Mm -hmm. it's not done before the season or after the season either which is a thing so maybe anyway i can't remember what it's for so don't mind me. Just That's making okay. the commentary that I remember seeing. All right. No, so, it's the season thirteen promo look. Oh. Okay. I apologize. Well, that's kind of like somebody critiqued somebody critiqued that she that her UK season two promo was her season twelve something or season thirteen something or other. And I was like, mm. who cares? I mean, also that, but you know, so that being said, uh, David, what did you think of the overall of the, the clash of uh, patterns? Some, some many great choices. Mm-hmm. Um, overall, I will say that much. I feel as though, um, 
this had the potential to go into a dumpster fire like very quickly <laughs> um, patterns clat like the title of it was clash of the patterns mm -hmm. so there's a whole idea the concept of like clashy patterns which can happen and in certain senses can be really bad <laughs> like super bad hurt in the eye kind of thing mm -hmm. um and i i didn't really see that bad i didn't see anything really bad on anyone mm -hmm. overall like i didn't see anything like oh my god that's so terrible um most part i think everyone stayed ish to the challenge kind of um We'll get into it a little bit, but for the most part, like there were some really good, great choices on for this particular runway. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay. so yeah, it Um, I had said some real beauties. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. I completely agree with what you said. This this could have been <laughs> it's really could have been a visual dumpster fire. Um, but the I mean, it's all stars. So I think if this mm. was done in a regular season. Oh, yes, mama. Child, like, I would have drank a whole bottle probably just trying to get through the episode. Um, <laughs> especially if I had to take shots for every misstep. But, no, this is All-Stars. So I think these queens knew better. I think they were all quite well aware, for the most part, mm -hmm. what, to, what to have and what to be ready for. So, that being said... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler! We're gonna serve, swerve, nerve the looks of the runway. First up, Miss Trinity K. Bonet, Wakanda Forever. Mm -hmm. So I will say this, honestly, when they were doing the mirror chat portion of the show and they're putting their makeup on, <laughs> was it Akira that made the, the SpongeBob so, yeah. comment? Oh, uh -huh. girl. I think it was Akira, Akira or Raja, one of the two. Um, so I give this a serve. Um, it's very well done. Um, it's a very, I love the silhouette. Um, I love the cape. It's a pattern that I don't necessarily think clashes per se. It looks like it's one or two patterns kind of going at the same time. My concern, and this is, you know, me thinking about it, is that it, is it just one pattern? Mm. Like, is this an outfit, like a fabric that has this pattern on it? Or is this, you know, a couple of different ones? And it's hard to tell in the pictures that you had, and it's hard to tell on the the um, episode. Mm -hmm. But I did love it. I love the look of it. And but my usual thought is: is this a clashing pattern? So. I agree with you. I think it's a serve. I have an answer for you. I think it's one pattern. I think it's just mm. a, a a repeating pattern in sequin. It is beautiful. If the concept is clash of the patterns, then technically it's a fail. Mm-hmm. Agreed. But it's beautiful. So, yes. Next up. Eureka. Now, I did not know this or pick up on it, and I should have thought of it. It wasn't until I saw her tweet did I get what this was meant to be a reference, like a, a, a interpretation of. Mm-hmm. I didn't. It is Dolly Parton's coat of many colors. Oh. Oh. Now, that does not change my opinion about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought it was a serve. It is. It is very much drag. It mm -hmm. is a lot of things to look at. It is very busy. But the silhouette, the design, it, you know, mm -hmm. as Eureka coined it, she's proportionizing. She knows how to, how to mm -hmm. cover herself up, like how to, how to really present. So yeah, I don't um, have, a, have a problem with it. Yeah. I also gave this, give this a serve. Um, it was one of the ones that I was really like fond of because when you said clash of the patterns, she mm -hmm. went there. Like almost all of those different stripes in this dress is a different pattern. Mm -hmm. um, and whoever designed this, I think she mentioned it in, on her Twitter or what have you, like bravo, because not only does it, does it look good, but it works. Mm -hmm. 
like surprisingly well. The design of it makes it so it kind of all kind of goes up into this, like there's the part here and then there's a part in the back. And it, for some reason, despite all of the different patterns on these different types of fabric uh, of the dress, it all kind of worked well together. Is it a, like, maybe it's so busy that it distracts enough that it blurs, maybe, mm. possibly? But for the most part, I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Agreed. I thought, it, I thought it was to serve. Next up, we have Akiria C. Davenport giving us, uh, I don't know what I want to call this, like pattern mm-hmm. body, like, uh, mm-hmm. like if you're going to design an outfit mm-hmm. um, concept, but like really dragified from mm-hmm. the corset and the quote unquote hair made out of measuring tape. And Mm -hmm. uh, she's purse first, hunty. Mm -hmm. And it's the pin cushion tomato. Yes, purse. You know. um, Yeah. Uh, So this is where I'm conflicted. (laughs) Okay, go for it. I think this look is is a serve, if not nerve. Mm Mm-hmm. That being said, I don't know how i feel about it clash given... of the pattern right 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 yeah very agreed um so i would also i would have given this nerve because mm-hmm. i think it is amazing however mm-hmm. i am taking away points like there's a system i'm taking away points because to me this is not a clash of the patterns this is a pattern mm-hmm. dress um, so it doesn't, while it's fabulous, don't get me wrong. I fucking love this. I love the fact that the hair is this measuring tape and it's long ass measuring tape. I love it. I love that the corset is these contrasting patterns of, of different types. If you've gone to her site, she, the designer wrote, um, that the, each panel of the corset is different type, different, um, patterns of the measuring tape. Mm-hmm. So you're getting different numbers in each one. So it like it's you're not going to see that from this far away. But I just I thought it was a great work. I love it. 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 But no, it is not a clashing pattern. It is a pattern, kind of like Trinity's. Like mm. it's a pattern. Right. Right. So it's not really clashing. Right. As it is just cohesive. So. Yeah. But still, wonderful, great job, sir. Next up, we have Miss Oraja O'Hara. So this one gets nerve. <laughs> okay. I think this is so amazing. Um, so quick-ish backstory. For me, um, I went to Ghana, West Africa in 2000. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we learned about and discussed as part of this class that I was in was like kente cloth and the different patterns and things like that and what Mm -hmm. they, you know, signify and how they're made, et cetera. For her to take those different colors and and patterns of kente or whatever this specifically is because there's different there's different things there's not just kente there's other cloths Mm -hmm. um taking that and then building this outfit maybe not her whoever built it um was uh, amazing and she did this in this style that is so her um these long pants that accentuate her long legs and her frame and this crop top with these bigger like bell not bell sleeves but like puffy sleeves into these gloves like didn't has a the nerve again to throw a wrap on her head like yes mama work like i love this mm-hmm. so this is this is nerve for me i thought it was a serve like i just i mean I, I i i i just think it's aesthetically beautiful and i thought mm-hmm. it's, i thought it was very well and creatively done um it did not 
blow me away, mm-hmm. but that's me. Right. <laughs> probably because like to me it looks so professionally well executed. Yet at the same time, I could see and I could see another queen wearing this outfit, not this exact outfit, but the style and this design, I guess. Mm. So that's where I was like, all right, I say I say you, Raja. Like, I, like mm-hmm. I, you get you get the points. No doubt about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Next up, we have Miss Kylie. Um. <laughs> Soft serve. Okay, that's, um, that's fair. I I I like this. Is it class of the patterns? Maybe, but I don't think so. Well, like I'm gonna be. So Go here's ahead. here's the interesting thing about it. Technically, if you look at the 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 pattern, quote unquote, the fabric, there is, from what I can see, it kind of looks like it has leopard, and cheetah. And and I don't know what the third one is. I think there's a third pattern in it. And then there are all these color swatches. Mm-hmm. So in theory, it is multiple patterns. However, it is one fabric. Yeah. But it is so creatively cut mm-hmm. and put together into an outfit. Yeah. So for yeah. me personally, it's a serve. I think this is what Trinity's wasn't. Mm. And what I mean by that is by using one solid pattern and yet creatively putting it together and formulating it, it, it turns it in a whole different direction. The only Fair. thing, the only thing I think I kind of want to, I would have wanted to tweak about it uh, is I think the pink of the hat. I'm just not so sure about Yeah. Um, I, I would have preferred I, it probably in like a sharp, crisp white but yeah i would have liked for this hat to have had something on it like either another pattern or a, the same pattern maybe i don't necessarily i'm i'm I, the color i'm i'm eh, about i don't yeah. particularly care for it i think it should have been another color altogether like you said maybe a white maybe a black because he's got these ruffles yeah. that are black on there probably a black hat yeah. and then thrown like either a strip of the fabric right, that has right. print on it to just sort of like connect it to it. Right. And hell, I know it's silly, but to then done like a, a feather that has like a, like a pattern on the feather. Mm, okay. Yeah. That's possible. I don't want to say like an ostrich, not an ostrich, right. but like, like the peacock. Or, I, I don't, uh, none of that, but just like one of those thinner, long, um, Fetters that have like like the stripes on them as yeah. an example. No, that's fair. Mm. Uh, next up, Miss Scarlet Envy. Another serve. Mm-hmm. Um. Another. I don't think this is all like clash. I mean, it clashes, but it doesn't really because it's kind of all stripey ish, kind of in a way. And uh, I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna. Follow Trixie's read about it that if you have to explain it, you know, it doesn't really work. Mm. And I get that there's writing and the writing is visible, but I don't particularly like it. it like, why? See, uh, I think, I, I mean, it, for me, it's a serve. However, I don't think there's anything that original about this. The only thing that makes it unique is the letter, like the letters that were turned into fabric to make the bottom, you know, portion of the dress, the different pieces. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I do think it meets the, you know, the requirement of what things are. I think Scarlet looks gorgeous. I mean, she, she really is serving up this like Hollywood bombshell kind of like, you know, face and mug and the pearls. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a yeah. really, really solid, well done execution. Um, and given, you know, that it's clash of the patterns. Okay. Well, there are patterns yeah. that they are clashing, yeah. but See, it all yeah. aesthetically goes together. Agreed. Next up, Jan. Swerve. Yeah. It's a swerve. absolute swerve. Yeah. I, this I, is this is 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> I've drank all my wine. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hold on, children. <laughs> um, kind. Of, I mean, we've talked about it a couple of times. The whole dress, the whole outfit, which is the dress. I'm not going to talk about the rest of it first. The dress doesn't ha- has but one pattern. Mm-hmm. And it, it's a very swirly pattern, but that's it. You relied on your accessories to be your quote unquote clashing, which I think is not good. Um, Jim and I actually talked about this outfit for a while after we saw it. Um, the stirrups are gross. On top of that, I don't know what this like. Is this a is this a striped sock? Is this part of the stirrup? I don't know, but whatever it is, it's garbage. Um, <laughs> Mama, this is garbage. Because <laughs> you wore these sandal shoes. <laughs> With this thing, so you can show the thing. You should never wear socks with sandals. Ever. Um, just call it what it is. And then you have these stirrups on top of it, and it, doesn't, it just doesn't all work together. Like, the bottom part doesn't work. If you had not worn those at all, like, okay, if you had worn the stirrups, and then put them into like a white boot that you then threw another pattern on. Boom. Good. Instead, you showed these white like sandal shoes that don't go well. Loved Kennedy Davenport's little gospel church moment in, in, in Pit Stop. Absolutely. Love that. And then... Again, like your accessories are pretty much being your clashing patterns because they're the things that have the different like mismatched patterns on them. Right. And it's all in this purple. Again, no. Like if if for me, clashing patterns are usually different colors. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm not getting, and I don't like it. And the hair is nice, but I'm also kind of tired of seeing you in purple I've i mean maybe tired. maybe she's really good friends with tina burner you know and that she's from new york and these girls and their color thematics and this is their brand and you know well, ma'am, maybe you should pick a different color <laughs> yeah it's I a big old swerve was... <laughs> now moving on <laughs> miss ginger minge A serve. Okay. I think it's nerve. Oh. Because I am like, no, she did not. But (laughs) she did. She done wore a safari outfit with a matching color scheme hat. And there are all these like floral and like other prints in these neon things put together with them boots that match the hat. Like, honey. I was like, this is a gorgeous atrocity. Like, I don't know yes. what to call it else. <laughs> like, this is what I would, when I think of, like, Clash of the Patterns, <gasps> this is what I think of. Mm. Like, does it go together? Absolutely. But you wouldn't expect it to. Right. Like, it, it works. It doesn't blur. Like, I was talking about Eureka's before where it kind of almost blurs a little bit. This obviously, no, this one does not. Like, mm. And because of the contrasting colors with the same pattern-ish on them, it works so well. And to throw on this, this boot and hat like that have nothing to do with nothing, like, <laughs> it just, yeah, it, it just kind of works. Um, I, yeah. Although the, the patterns on the edge of the hat and the, the rim, the rim the rim of the hat and then the the stripe other like stripe good god words are hard why <laughs> i'm gonna keep playing with that um just it all kind of works into the pattern that's on like the the um stripes of the dress yeah 
and the belt, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, it, it's cohesive, even though it's yeah. not like it's, yeah, it's something else. I was like, Ginger, that's, that's some nerve. Like I just, mm -hmm. and she looks beautiful and she did both her eyes in I, two different colors. I mean, oh, like, it's I, just, it's so, so well done. I, like I was the like, hair. thank God, because mm -hmm. honey, you were serving some scary runways. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So that is all of the queens from uh the runway for oh, us. You didn't, what? We didn't get Pandora. Did I not get Pandora? <gasps> I thought I did. Hold on. That I'm, like skipping through real fast. And see, even my gut said we're missing somebody. Damn. <gasps> I'll be damned. Oh, oh well, dear. Let's, let's talk about Pandora because I know, I swear I got it, but apparently not. <laughs> I don't know why. See? That's so strange. It happens. <laughs> you made a mistake. We talked about that before. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I, I, so I will give Pandora's a serve. I did like it. Um, it to me met the challenge, the clashing patterns, right? What have you. Yes, it was this homage to The Nightmare Before Christmas and Sally and all of that stuff, which I got. But um, I do will admit, I think the length is a little wrong. I think the dress should have gone not only to the floor, but should have had a train mm. with it. I think that's talked about in, in Untuck, not Untuck, in Pit Stop. Right. But I, I, I liked it and I got it almost immediately when she mentioned it, like the Sally, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Right. Um, but I also think it was maybe a little safe. Yeah. Yeah. I, so Bussy queen, um, had a really interesting take on it that I don't know if I agree with because Bussy was saying the one thing that she was disappointed in is that she didn't carry through in the makeup, the Sally, like stitched, like mm -hmm. look, like, you know, to bring, like, things together. But in my mind, I was like, you have to be real careful about that because that's IP and you can't do that on the runway. Like, you, you can't be careful become about a character. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, I could see where the where the judges would say that it's too uh, costuming. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, it's too much, like, you know, that you're taking on this whole other character. So, yeah. Yeah, like, I took it as a drag glamour take on sally right an interpretation without it being yeah. direct yeah no yeah. i agree so that being said uh i want to talk about the lip sync okay Ooh. well because oh oh yeah we did we did say we were going to talk about this so let's so uh do that. eureka and trinity and akiria are the top team of the week they're the the table that like does the best and wins but but uh <laughs> i so want to play this even though it's not exactly correct and the winner is we have a tie oh my god what do you mean tie? so the I'm reason not, why okay. i want to play the tie thing is because rue pulls like pulls the padge and says, however, you are not the winners of the week. The top queen of the week is Miss Ginger Minch. So. T, y'all. So <laughs> I hate to say this, but I disagree. Okay. I don't agree that Ginger was the top. Okay. Um, now, don't get me wrong, she has some funny moments and, and everything, but reality was, um, it wasn't the best, to me, that wasn't the best conversation. And it didn't really, like, compare. If I compare the teams and compare everyone's, like, individual challenge, like, performances, I loved 
the first team all around, and I think one of them should have been the winner. Mm. Like, I think of the three, I almost want to give it to Akiria, maybe Eureka, mm. just because of how the conversation went and how well they kind of worked off on each other, worked on each other, ooh, worked off each other and played off each other. Theirs was entertaining. Theirs was was thought provoking. Theirs was the one that to me like um satisfied the challenge. So uh, I feel differently. So here's my thing. In each group I felt there was one person that stood out that was was a little more than the rest and not in a good way. Mm. I think Eureka was just a tad a little too much. Okay. Like, I, that bothered me in the first, like, I was like, oh, that was pretty okay. good. I was like, but Eureka, if you just reined it in just a tiny bit, okay. like, I felt like she was forcing it a little. And then in the second group, it was definitely Scarlet who was, like, in outer space. Um, I don't I don't know. Like, she was telling a heartwarming story, and then she suddenly, like, flips into this weird, like... Mm-hmm character thing that the judges actually critiqued her for and then in the third group i felt that it was jan because jan was jan and i was just like all right like if the three of you had been in a group together holy moly like i don't know what that (laughs) show would have been like because i think there would have been a lot of like fighting for the air in the room Mm. um so of all the moderators i think ginger was the best I think Ginger, okay. like, I think Ginger met what they were looking for out okay. of the talk show host, like, kind of segments. And I think she definitively served up what they liked on the runway. And I think mm-hmm. that's where it ended up coming from for Rue. So I'm not trying to justify it. I'm just saying okay, that's, to me, it made sense. I didn't take qualms with it. Now, I realized that if I was one of those queens in the first group... That was told they won, but they're not the overall winner. I would, I would, I would feel a certain way. Like I would, I would, I would, I would be in my feels. So, mm-hmm. yes, I'm, fair. So yeah, there's that. All right. So that being the case, um, so <laughs> the reason I want to talk about this is because child, I wanted a journey. <sighs> so, <laughs> to the end, ends up winning, and I love how she. Is like, great, I won. And now I have to lip sync. Fuck me. Like, yeah. I have to choose a lipstick. And I don't know who to choose. I'm like, really kind of like screwed up about this. It was quite fun. Um, mm-hmm. So there was a whole thing. Honey. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. I have a connection with Ginger from many, many, many moons ago. If I ever get to meet her in person, I want to tell her this story. When we went to Gay Days in Florida a long time ago. I actually got to see Ginger perform before I even knew who the hell Ginger was. It was a Hamburger Mary's in Orlando. There was an amazing Sunday brunch whole thing. And they they did the whole Wizard of Oz story as the show. And Ginger mm-hmm. was amazing. The whole cast was stupendous. A queen ran around the room with her hair looking like a tornado with a house on top of it. I mean, like it was, it was something else. So I know that Ginger could be a really good performer. So this is her and her like uh lipstick assassin look. And I was like, Ooh, bitch. She is servant body Tyler, like eighties, big hair. Like, mm-hmm. like, 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 Oh yeah. And she got to dance. Yes. I was, I was all for it. Um, and then we get the, <laughs> the, the lipstick assassin moment. This shot with the silhouette is so amazing and there's a part of me that's like we probably should have realized the gig was up because this look says who shows up in like a parka from like you know (laughs) dr shivago like you know i was like all right and i'm off for something something's going on with that and lo and behold it is bianca del rio so uh we were discussing this i think before we started actually recording of your thoughts mm-hmm. and the whole thing about Bianca being on. And I was like, the moment I saw her, I was like, gagged. I was mm-hmm. like, holy shit, Bianca is the lip sync assassin. This yeah. is amazing. So I feel bad, and I will say because 
um, I normally don't watch the episode until Friday. Uh-huh. So the episodes start like our, they they drop it like three a.m. on Thursday. Thursday morning. And hold on, um, and I was like, oh shit! This was one of the things I was spoiled on, which was that it, that Bianca Del Rio was the lipstick assassin. And I was so mad because knowing what happens next, like this is the stuff that like I if I had seen this raw with no information, I would have been like, what's the assassin? She ain't done nothing lip syncing on this show. What? Who? How? (laughs) So this I thought was amazing. I had completely, I didn't forget, but I like for some reason threw out of my mind that Bianca won. I mean, yes, technically Bianca won, but I, for some reason was like, this is amazing that she's the lip sync assassin because I want to see how this goes down. Uh Now the reality is technically none of the previous winners should ever be expected to be the assassin. Yeah. Like they should be all the other girls to have like another chance to come back and prove their talents or whatever. Yeah. Technically, and then I go, you know, they had last last season. Um, um, whoo, her name just left my head. Monet Exchange, um, came in and she's technically a all stars winner. Oh, that's right. Mm hmm. Yes, so I guess there has been precedent that they've had winners before, yes, in some fashion. So, that yes. being said. <laughs> So, and of course, this plays out in the way that it absolutely should, which is Rue says to Bianca, is she ready to lip sync? And Bianca goes, I'm about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she does this quick little witty thing. And she's like, um, I actually didn't come to lip sync. I came to go to the bathroom. And uh-huh. then she, you know, quips to the, all the other queens and she's like, take notes, girls. If you win, you don't ever have to come back. Like, <laughs> do it again. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, honey. So that leaves Ginger confused, like, on the main stage. Yet she's amused because, okay, it's Bianca. And then Bianca's like, peace. And she's out and she leaves. <laughs> so then, of course, everybody's like, what in the hell is going on around here? Like, to me, this had to be the most fun day ever in this season of, of filming because, like, I'm like, oh, okay. Bianca's here. Holy shit. She's the lip sync assassin. Nope, she's not the lip sync assassin. We have a different person. Like, <laughs> it's no, a whole. Don't have, we, don't, we don't have, like, like, who the fuck, who is the assassin? If Bianca <laughs> just walked off the stage, like, I'm not going to assassinate anybody. Like, Okay, like, who, <laughs> then, then do I just automatically win? Right, like, right, 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 right. <laughs> right. Like, like, <sighs> that would have been my thought. Like, okay, $30,000, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> Agreed. So then oh. we get revealed the Lipstick Assassin. And even then, this shot is amazing. Nobody's sure exactly who this is. After the cur- the scrim comes up because they're wearing these crazy glasses with the tinsel, like they're really well covered up. So no one's quite sure as to who we have, but it is the one, the only Miss Mayhem Miller. Ah, yes. And <sighs> honey, she has painted for the gods. Yes. She is gorge. Mm-hmm. She looks so beautiful in this royal purple. Like she just... It's something else. I was like, all right, Miss May May. She is totally, totally serving it. Um, I was like, I am here. I am living for this. I'm just going to say this now. This is probably one of my all-time favorite lip syncs. Mm. I really, really, really loved this lip sync. I thought it was fun, and I did not know this song. And that might have been part of the reason why I was all the more entranced and amused because mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know what is going to happen. Like, I don't know the lyrics. I don't, like, I'm not going to try to presume what comes next. And <laughs> I think both of them uh, did a really great job. Agreed. And, like, these things, these, like, both of them were serving really funny, great looks. And 
I believe someone had posted online that they have seen Ginger do this song before. Oh. Which is huge because that says to me she already knew the song. And I think that makes a huge difference for these queens when it comes to lip syncing. Whether Agreed. it's for your life or your legacy against an assassin, whatever. Because if you already know the song, I think you were that much more confident and you just perform as mm-hmm. opposed to trying to remember the words to lip sync and do whatever your stuff is. <laughs> These two, honestly, I'm pretty sure they're good Judy's like, you know, outside uh-huh. of, outside of competing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. Uh, she, oh, it was, it was some thing else. Yes. I also appreciate how the color scheme of all the lighting on the stage was like really cohesive. So May May is in like this, like it, it's Mardi Gras kids. It is purple. It is gold. And they're doing green lighting. Like they are just really like aesthetically, they, they were really kind of serving it up. <laughs> she is a, and as, a lip syncer the house down boots she knows how to dance i love how they were interacting with each other and mm-hmm. f- fun competitive yes. like we've bitched before about these queens that become like stage hogs and they do uh-huh. this bullshit and they were they were very like uh, agreeable uh being around with each other and yeah. it was pretty amazing and this end of the song Oh, was so good. I loved it so much. It it really cracked it's, me up. It's in your hand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mayhem grabbing the shoe from her foot. Mm-hmm. I was just like, yes, bitch work. Like that was fun. And Ginger, I think just has always been like, her face has always been expressive. And that's the best part for her. Yeah. And it just works so it works so well in this moment. I was like, "Yep, that's good." Yeah. No, it was it was it was really fabulous. So the three queens are called up that were in the bottom. That was another twist. It mm. wasn't two queens in the bottom. It was three queens in the bottom, and they weren't even all from the same team. Correct. So that was a whole a whole a uh, like actually. No, okay. Two of them for, were from yes. Motherhood. One of them was from um, um, Body. Body. Yeah. Yeah. So they made up some of the remainder of the other teams, but not all of them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then Ginger's the winner. Mm-hmm. And she has to make her pick. She picks Scarlet. And I'm thinking this is going to be ugly. I'm very much looking forward to the next episode because I want to see how she explains this. I want to see how uh, everybody voted. Also that you. Um, oh, oh, you don't. Did you watch Untucked? Uh, oh, yes, 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 I did. That's right. Because I just remembered. Um, it was a tie. No. Yes. With the votes for the Queens, it was a tie. It was four for four for Jan, four for Scarlet. Oh, you know what? I counted Ginger twice. Because when I watched Untucked, I said to myself, Oh, Scarlet was going home no matter what. It didn't matter. No. It was a tie. Okay. And I am I am I was when we when we watched Untucked, the first question that came to my mind that I mentioned, said to Jim was, I wonder how they're going to solve the tie. And Jim uh, said the very simplest solution is it would have been Ginger's lipstick. Oh, right. The easiest solution is that Ginger breaks the tie. Right. Because if she voted for Jan, Jan went home. If she voted for Scarlet, Scarlet went home. It's an easy. Right. But there five, were three four. of them in the bottom. So technically she could have picked. Oh. She could have picked yes. Kylie, and that she would have fucked that have whole theory up. Kylie, yeah. That's also true. I didn't think about that, but that could have been the thing, too. If it had just been... Right. Ooh. But that would have been another conversation. But... Um, right, right. But, uh, again, if it had been... 
Yeah, actually, you just you kind of disproved my theory. If there had been two people in the bottom, easy tie right. breaker is the lipstick assassin or the winner of the of the um, challenge. Right. No, I agree with you. If if there had only been two at the bottom, then obviously, like, even if Ginger had lost, she would have been the tiebreaker. Like, they would have mm-hmm. somehow figured that out. But yeah. Yeah, I'm very curious. What or they send two queens home. Hmm. And now that would have been something else. Mm-hmm. Oh, so oh, yeah. No. Okay. So now I will say this: I really felt for Scarlet. She is devastated. Mm-hmm. And she did not think she was going home. However, I'm waiting for the controversy to come out later, because JN technically was pointing out something that Scarlet was leaving out. And I was like, uh... Selective memory? I think... Okay. I mean, but here's the hard part. Like, you plead your case. Uh Uh-huh. So... And... It's one of these... Okay, so... Y'all, I don't know how Scarlet's going to, I mean, she's not going to be there, but like, I agree with Jan, like it was definitely like some kind of selective memory or something where she decided to remove details and that's not cool. But again, Jan's not the only one that was standing on that stage. There were five other queens. Now, am I saying like someone, some one of the other queens should have piped up and said something like, "Well, didn't Rue say this?" Mm. No, I don't. I don't think so. I think you know. Again, few of the queens knew what was said. I was waiting for Ginger when she was talking to Kylie for Kylie to reveal what mm. Rue had said about Scarlet. Like I was waiting for some type of confirmation for ginger that scarlet completely left that out like mm. it wasn't just jan trying like fight, trying to fight for herself yeah right it wasn't just jan sort of throwing scarlet under but at the same time jan wasn't lying so no. i was like um it's a competition so i don't want to say all is fair but i don't think jan was out of line no I don't think so either. I I wish, again, there's a part of me that always feels like, Jan, you need to work on your delivery. Mm -hmm. Because there are times, at least as far as we've seen, where your delivery reads as immature. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's because of your, your, you know, experience what have you but you sometimes come off as a impatient child Mm. this is such a read (laughs) as i'm saying i'm like fuck Uh, but that is how i feel sometimes and that's what i think people don't like listen to fully right because it's the it's for, for for some of them it's the ramblings of a child and I don't need to listen to a child because, mm. you That's know, fair. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there that that happened. There was there was all that. Uh, so mm-hmm. Ginger wins thirty thousand dollars and very graciously decides to give her uh, main challenge partners twenty five hundred dollars each, mm-hmm. which was what she also won. What do you mean? Which is what she also won? When you win the challenge, you oh, get five thousand dollars. Right. So she basically gave away her five thousand dollars as winning. I forgot about the five thousand. And then I don't know, but I'm pretty sure if they keep doing it all season long, she got five thousand or bucks. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. They didn't. Min- I don't recall them mentioning that during this week's See, untucked. See, that's but why again, I paused. But again. Yeah. So, anyways, this untucked was very different. They weren't to 
She got together. 3, I know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's that. That so are you ready to move on anyways to our mm-hmm. last segment? Sorry, we were kind of running long because we talked a lot about the assassin, but I thought it was worth it. <laughs> Girl, you want so much more wine. You're like, damn it, my glass is empty. I don't want any more wine. I'm good. I've got a little, like a bit of a little buzz I'm realizing because I realized I didn't have as much in my stomach as I thought I did. Um, nice. Well, yeah. we're, gonna, we're getting to the end of the show. So let's talk about snaps and eye rolls, the hits and the misses, a.k.a. the highs and the lows of the episode. David, who are you giving snaps to? So I am giving uh, – so this is very funny. It was a moment in um, – right at the end of the table talk mm. for, yes. and it's Ginger's last little line. And she kind of says, um, and I wrote it down cause I loved it so much. And I started even, and it says right as the camera, they panned away mm-hmm. and it's just there talking. And she goes, wow, I didn't realize all of us were so fucked up. I, <laughs> I I died. I love that line. It was so funny, so hilarious. I just it it caught me off guard. We were both. I was laughing like so hard for it. Jim was, I think, too, because it just was. It was just off the cuff. Like they weren't. It wasn't during the episode, but it was just one of those moments that was just hilarious. To me, that that's right up there with Eureka and her group in the first one, and they decide that they're going to go eat afterwards and so eureka and akiri are like let's go eat and eureka says to trinity are you paying and trinity's like no <laughs> like, <laughs> that was a whole little thing so i agree like the first group and the third group they had these really fun kind of like off camera interactions like mm-hmm. like that made it more like a real like kind of like chat show or whatever mm-hmm. um as opposed to the middle one but no that was that was really funny when ginger said that oh. nice oh nice. sorry Jim just reminded me because there's another one because I think it was hilarious too. And it was during, it was Eureka. It was her line about, um, um, uh, oh, I, I, I'm like, I'm not a chef, like, chef chaser, I ain't going nowhere. Like, like right. She's line, like, she's she like, like, what's with this chubby chaser thing? She's, she's like, like, I'm not running nowhere. She's I like, I'm sitting nowhere. here eating a hot pocket, like shoving yes. a hot pocket in my mouth until yes. I get a ding dong. Yeah. <laughs> and then she does that whole thing about like having someone who's into her and how it get, it goes from sexy to fucked up like real fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's a. It, I in fact, I think I shared it on Twitter because someone like took that part and was like, "This, this says it all." And I was like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. yes, 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 yes." Yeah. So there, there you go. <sighs> what about you? Um. So I want to give snaps for honesty and heart. I really think the queens, for the most part. Mm-hmm. Uh, overall did a really good job with this particular challenge. I agree with you that they are, that it is Rue profiting off of their trauma. Um, but, you know, it's RuPaul's Drag Race. Why would we expect yeah. anything different? Um, but no, I thought that they were all really valid and honest. I think some people were a little more reserved, um, Pandora Box explicitly being like the most reserved out of the bunch. Although mm-hmm. Pandora did say in her Twitter that she said more than was shown, but of course mm-hmm. she's been on this kind of beef about getting edited this season. Uh, mm-hmm. And that she's not going to get fair representation. But there's a part of me that's like, maybe that's because you go a long ways in the season. And so they're giving more time to the to the talky talks because they're going to be gone. Mm-hmm. So anyways, just maybe. a conspiracy theory. <clears throat> and Damon, who are you eye rolling at? <laughs> so I, I have two eye rolls down here. Um, the first one is for Stank Face. And that's for Miss Scarlet Envy. Like, I know, like, she was hurt at the end. And I understand because this was, like, a moment. But from her critiques on, she had this, like, mm. like what the fuck, like, stankiest stank face all over her face. And I was just like, ma'am, you, don't you understand the that this is how this works? Like... Right. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And I understand that you wanted to win. And I will admit, 
her critiques were, while they were not as, they weren't super harsh, they were critiques and they were something that I caught. Mm -hmm. Like she definitely seemed to jump into her character a lot more when there was an opportunity to potentially to show some vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, I understand you want to win because you've been like, you know, coasting safe ish for a while and you kind of want to go out there. But my usual thought with that is you don't go with what you know. Mm -hmm. You go with what you maybe make you make, might make you uncomfortable or might get you out of your, out of sorts. Right. She had an opportunity to do, to talk about body instead of, instead of motherhood. And she chose motherhood because she has a very, you know, unique story, which is fair. But is that really how you wanted to go with it? And you know, you kind of unfortunately paid a cost for it. And then my other eye rolls and I put down is really rue. And it has to do with the a couple of things. But the big the big one, the first one is the um this team won. Like, you were the top team. You were the quote-unquote winners. But we're not judging you as a team. We're judging you individually, so Ginger won. Like, <laughs> like fuck that shit. Like, that seems so, like, super fucking cruel, almost, to the point of, like, like why? Why even say that? Like, y'all okay. Y'all did really good. I loved you. You were amazing. I loved it. But this girl over here won. So here's my thing. I don't disagree with you. I think there should have been a different delivery. Agreed. I think I think you could say the same thing, but in a much different way. I think Rue could have said, for the record, this is it was an individual challenge. While you were grouped as teams, you are you were judged individually. That said, one team did do better than the others, like as a as a group. And I want to mm-hmm. make sure that I recognize that. Mm-hmm. That said, right. That said, one person is going to win overall out of the nine of you. Do you know what I mean? And then, yeah, right. And then I think that delivery kind of like mm-hmm. sets it up, gives some proper recognition, resets it, mm-hmm. and then yeah. But Here I agree with you. Like the way the way it was kind of handled or edited or whatever, it definitely like I think everybody was like, oh what. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah yeah um and then her I, I i don't know um i got what she was going for with her line to scarlet about like it felt made me feel uncomfortable mm-hmm. what i think she was trying to go for is i don't feel like i should be watching this if you know what i mean like like this is an intimate mm-hmm. this is a moment that you are kind of sharing of yourself and this is personal, maybe too personal. And I don't feel comfortable that I had to, that I was watching it. Granted, she probably didn't. But no, that's, I, I, or, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I feel Just, different. Okay. I think when she said, you made me feel uncomfortable, it's because of the, of the, like, the switching back and forth. Right. The, I don't want to, I don't mean it this way, but it was like a split personality. It was this very mm. jarring, like, you were having a tender moment. It was very heartfelt. And then you just like kind of blipped into this like weird comedic kind mm. of thing. But it was uncomfortable because I could tell you were uncomfortable because you didn't know what to say. Like, because you didn't realize like mm. you caught yourself in an awkward situation because the reality is all of the queens were being true with themselves. Like they were they were. Pandora, Eureka, Trinity, Akira, Kylie, Raja, you know what I mean? Like they were being their drag personas. They were not trying to be a character Mm -hmm. like on a talk show. And that's the one thing that I definitely felt that Scarlet was doing out of all of them. I was like, girl, I don't know what the hell you're doing, but you're no, this is not right. So Mm. I think what Rue was trying to say is, 
as a viewer of the talk show, that makes me uncomfortable because you're like, okay. you're, you're unreliable, like your personality, whatever this was, like this bit bopping whatever thing. So, <laughs> but that's my interpretation. Like I didn't, okay, but I, I agree with you. Like it was awkward when Rue said it because I was like, holy shit. Like Rue just yeah. called you out. Like one out of nine, you just got called mm -hmm. out as the one person that made her uncomfortable. And I was like, well, that just kind of seals things now, doesn't it? Like that, that's how mm -hmm. I interpreted that. Like if I was on the stage, I, what we're missing is the context of the before and the after that comment. Mm -hmm. Because I'm wondering if any of the other Queens feel that way, but then Jan backed it up in back in the workroom. Uh Mm -hmm. So Jan kind of is our narrator or our interpreter of that moment. So mm -hmm. we're just going off of that. Yeah. So what about you? Um, well, it's related to that. I said acting well, not vulnerable. And it's explicitly Scarlet. I felt like she was being strange, being odd, being weird, being like, I think she honestly was uncomfortable. She hadn't prepared herself for how they were going to do it. I think they all talked how they were going to discuss things. I think they did a little bit of rehearsal, um, each of the groups, but Scarlett explicitly, for some reason, I think she just switched weirdly back into that, like, character from in her season where they did the, you know, the diva, you know, mm -hmm. deity, whatever, you know, church of... Uh, stuff yeah. thing and I think that was what was so strange and I was like what are you doing but then again I was like look at yourself like we already discussed it the outfit and the hair like it was all way more drag than it needed to be it was just you know mm -hmm. um, so yeah I that was that was the one thing where I was like I don't think like you I don't think you're threading the needle mm. I think she and Jan explicitly did not thread the needle mm-hmm I think everybody else did to varying degrees. And I really feel that Ginger was one of the ones that had the most finesse fair uh, about it. But that's just how I saw it. So, yeah. <laughs> but well, like there you go. What you think about it. Do you agree with us? Do you disagree with us? Like we want to know, please let us give us your table talk. Yeah. Uh, and the way you could do that is you can go to Cubs out loud uh, dot com as our blog you can comment on our post on there you can send us an email at comes out loud at gmail.com you can leave us a voicemail message and we'd love to play it on the show you can call 361 col talk that's 361-265-8255 leave a little recording we'd be happy to play it or you can tell us you don't want it aired and we'll just discuss what you had to say mm -hmm. um and uh, on the social media outlets, you can go to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, most of the places. Type in Cubs Out Loud is one word to find us. If you want to join the entourage to discuss the episodes, um, you can go to tinyurl.com forward slash telegram hyphen C-O-L-D-R uh, for the regular series to know when we're going to be recording those episodes live. You can go to our Google Calendar, which is at tinyurl.com forward slash calendar hyphen or dash whichever you want to call it c-o-l if you would like to support cubs out loud there's several ways to do that you can go to zazzle.com slash cubs out loud and you get yourself a lovely uh bit of attire like a t-shirt uh damon is wearing the cubs out loud drag race logo in a lovely like baby blue color um i happen to have the uh consent is my foreplay shirt i always like can't hold it right i don't know why um <laughs> That's done in the drag pride colors, or you could get yourself some merch, you know, like a uh, home goods. So we happen to have these lovely, you know, hot serving teacups. Well, they're not really mm -hmm. teacups, they're coffee cups <laughs> mm. with the drag race logo on it, um, as well as some other items. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud, and you get the uh, full versions of the shows, including the pre-show and the post-show, uh, where you can hear even more of our thoughts of different things about topics and subjects. Uh, mm -hmm. Or, if you'd like to, you could just give us a tip. We would be happy to pick the cabbage, honey, and just grab the money. You can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud for a one-time donation. We would greatly appreciate it. And if you would like to help promote Cubs Out Loud, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, where we would appreciate five stars and a lovely positive comment, or uh, Google Play Podcasts, subscribe pretty much anywhere you can find us online, because COLDR does have its own podcast audio feed. Damon, if they were to find you online, where would they look? 
If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cup 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 um, on most sites and Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Word. Uh, if you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GameBear73. Specifically, when it comes to all things drag, you can go to GameBear73 D-R-A-G uh, to see uh, those things. And I'm mostly just like resharing what I see, uh, some of that stuff that's on there. And I even shared some of the stuff with David, which is what we talked about in the pre-show that you missed when mm-hmm. you were busy spilling tea. So mm-hmm. with that... Get a patron. Uh, <laughs> become, become a patron, a patron and you'll get all that uh huh. That said, uh, that's the end of the show. So thank you for joining us, and we will see you in another week for episode number six of season six of All Stars. We're already halfway through the season. Oh my god! Yay! Oh. <laughs>